So it's time to talk Donegal Senior Football Championship once again and uh, joining us to look ahead to the round two games is a man that's won the Dr. Maguire Cup on several occasions as a player and a manager, Brendan Kilcoyne. Good to talk to you. Good to see you again, Brendan. Good evening, Ashin. How are you? Not too bad, Brendan. Uh, obviously looking ahead to, to the action this weekend, but already again, there is uh, more controversy around the championship following on from the situation with Neve Connell and Kilcar. Another replay has been ordered. Ardra and Bundorn has to be played again. And I think everybody's agreeing that this is something that the 2021 championship does not need. Yeah, 100% Ashin. Like, you know, we spoke before about the previous objection with Kilcar and Nave Connell County final from 2020 and the legacy that they that may leave for a long time. And again, I'm speaking from experience here. And, you know, it's just unfortunate this Ardra one door an issue has arisen and again it's a similar issue but dissimilar if you understand me in relation to the use of substitutes and it's something that needs to be tidied up by clubs and county boards and cccs and because it it, it, it can leave it this could drag on for a while and you know if, if our dra decide to appeal this now where does that leave this year's championship it's going to stall the whole thing it's just going to create more uncertainty more bad vibes, and it's not good for Donegal club football, Ashin. Yeah, our draw are obviously considering their options, and they have 72 hours to, to appeal this decision. But the rest of the clubs, I'm sure, Brendan, will be thinking to themselves, what's going to happen in three weeks' time when we get round four done and dusted, and the championship then splits into knockout, quarterfinals, and, and relegations. And what sort of bearing will this situation have on the championship progressing at that stage if it's not done and dusted? Well, that's, that's the issue, and no one knows that, Oshin, that this drags on for a while because, you know, we have that split coming, top eight, bottom eight coming in the next few weeks following the completion of the first four round-robin games. And if this issue isn't resolved at that stage, the whole championship can only be held up, and that just drags things out. And as I say, I was involved in a similar situation back, I think it was 2003, when there was an objection to Eddie Brennan. Um, that delayed the championship and it wasn't played until the following Easter, I think it was played. And, you know, it takes the sparkle off the championship. It takes the momentum. We were all enjoyed being out at the games the last couple of weeks and seeing teams compete and seeing the club players, you know, who have had a tough enough time. Their football has been limited and there's been no crowds for a while. And this just brings more uncertainty to the whole completion of the championship. But... I suppose, you know, teams just have to concentrate on the games in hand that are coming up this weekend and that's all the players can do and the management teams can do and just get on with it and hopefully this thing will resolve itself out over the next few days. Yeah. Uh, looking at the uh, the other games or the matches, Brendan, this coming weekend, uh, rather, that Ardra and Bundoran are featuring and Ardra are due to go to Milford. Bundoran are set to host Kelly Beggs in a big battle of the south of the county. I'm sure Milford and Kelly Beggs will be hoping that the, what's going on off the field is going to affect these two teams on it. Absolutely, yeah. And, you know, we'll say Milford, you know, they're, they're playing, playing our draw this weekend and they're under a bit of pressure as it is, Oshin, from the point of view. You know, um, they lost their first game and I don't think the scoreline did them justice down in Gidor that day. I think there was a couple of missed penalties in that. And, you know, play, coming up against our draw now who are kind of on a crest of a wave after a really good victory in the first in the first game. So, you know, the beating Bundoran. But, you know, Mil Milford are at home this weekend. They're struggling and we've seen them last year. We've seen them ship a heavy beating last year in the last couple of years at, you know, in the knockout stages and that. So it's a big game for Milford. They, they, they listen. They've plenty of quality, and you look at the Barrett's like you look at Kane Barrett, full forward, fine player, and really going well. And Chippy, and you look at the Tony McNamee in the ranks now, and you know Cal McGettigan is excellent on the freeze, and Luke Barrett centre back, and the two O'Donnells, Owen O'Donnell and Rory O'Donnell, who captained the twenties of this year's Ulster final. Like they have a lot of good players, but they just need to go out and perform, and it's a big ask for them. And then you, you, you look at the Ardra side of things. How is this going to affect them mentally, their pre preparation for this game? It's going to, there's no doubt about it. Like, you know, and I've been, as I said, I've been involved in these situations. It does affect, now it, they can take a positive effect from it, but, you know, it does stop their momentum somewhat from the point of view that have been on a crest of a wave after getting a win the first day. And then this news comes through and it filters through to the players and they're thinking, ah, where's this going to end up? So, 
it's not an ideal scenario for them. And I think just the fact that Milford have home advantage and I'd, I'd expect a bit of a kickback from them. I know Paddy McGrath had carrying an injury and they've had a couple of other injury problems. And again, they're blooding a lot of new players. They've, you know, but there's still plenty of experience with Connor Classen, Thomas Boyle, John Ross Malloy, and obviously Paddy McGrath, if he's fit to play this weekend. And that'll obviously have a big bearing on how this game transpires. But I would expect Milford to you know, show a bit of resoluteness and come through and maybe get their campaign on the road this weekend, Oshin. OK, what about Bundoran and Kelly Beggs? Bundoran, obviously, are going to be missing Paul Brennan because he was sent off, wasn't he, the last day? And uh, the, the likes of Kelly Beggs have huge doubts over Owen Ban and Hugh McFadden, who are their two key men. So this one could go either way, so it could, Brendan. Yeah, hundred percent. And like you know, you're thinking about this game. It was difficult to call. It'd be difficult to call at the best of times. But the uncertainty around, you know, the 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 fitness and availability for Killy Beggs of Huey and Owen Ban is going to be a crucial factor here. So it is because you know Huey, Huey McFadden is the life and soul. I've watched them play over the last number of years, and he's their leader on the middle of the park, and he really does inspire them. And if he's not available, it's going to be a big miss. So it is and. You know, then you have the Bundoran issue. Jamie Brennan is out with a long-term injury. And Paul Brennan, I don't know, was he were, were Bundoran appealing that card or what his availability? So the game would have been hard to call, but you have the four big players, the four major major characters in this in, in, in this game that may not be available. So it is really a difficult one to call. There's plenty of other talent on the field of that, there's no doubt. And, you know, Killy Beggs are... You know, they'll be reeling from the first day when they lost at home to Glen Swilly when they would have expected to get a brighter start to their championship. But, you know, they didn't produce the goods against Glen Swilly that day. And as I mentioned, the, the doubts about the injuries to the two key players leave it really difficult to call. And I really can't call this one, Hashin. I'm just going to sit in the fence and call it a draw. OK. Uh, the tie of the round, undoubtedly, is down at the bridge. St. Michael's against uh, Guido, two Division One sides are clashing in the first game, 2 o'clock on Saturday. That one uh, starts at St. Michael's going in with a win. Guidor going in with a win. St. Michael's will obviously be looking for improvement on last year, uh, while Guidor will be looking to get back to a final. So they will, Brendan. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, it's a massive... I see this is a massive game for Guidor and how they progress through the year. And, you know, My Michael's certainly won't have any inhibitions about taking on Guidor down the bridge from the point of view that, you know, the, the, they've, had, they've had a close rivalry with them down through the years. While it's not achieving, obviously, what Guidor have achieved, we all know the talent that in Guidor, it's unlimited. Like, you know, there's some really good young players coming through as well as that. You look at Donald McBride and, you know, you have Finn on Coyle that came through from Donegal Miners and a few of these young fellas. But their talisman, Ori McNeil, seems to be playing really well. And that's a big plus for Gidor. And if Gidor can get pulling in the in the right direction, if they can get the dressing room right, we all know how dangerous they will be and what a part they will play in this year's championship. But they're going to have a tough test down at the bridge. You know, Michael's going to be very well organised. I know Daniel McLaughlin is in charge. And I know Remy McLaughlin, who's involved with me in the minors, very astute and he'll have... He'll have St. Michael very well set up. They have a massive experience throughout the team. You know, there's obviously Colm Anthony, who has played very little football this year and was still able to go out and kick 1-6 there in the last game and against McCool's. And they've experienced Martin Michael Henney. That, you know, M Michael Langan is obviously a huge player, even though he didn't score much the first day. He was involved in a lot of the big plays, so he was. And... You know, they, they, they also have a good mixture of youth there in the team too. So, you know, the, the St. Michael's, a lot of people may have thought that St. Michael's had slipped away yeah. from the top five, six, but they proved the last day by, that was a big, big win against McCool's and they showed a lot of character after the concession of two early goals. So they're going to be, you know, they're going to be really going into this game with a lot of confidence. They'll have no fear, as I said, but I would still expect the the the. Exper the the experience that Edor got by getting winning the Ulster title a couple of years ago, and they seem to be getting back on track, albeit, you know, it was Milford the beat in the first day, and we know Milford haven't been going well, but you would still expect Edor to have a wee bit too much for them, and if Edor are going to be a feature in this year's championship, they need to go to the bridge and lay down a marker. Yeah, the fourth game on Saturday is Termin against St. Michael's at the Burn Road starts at uh, four o'clock. Uh, or Terminic and St. Eunice, excuse me. Uh, both sides, of course, losing, Brendan, 
in the opening round. St. Eunice to Kilcar. Terman went down to, uh, to go on St. Knowles. Uh, Terman are meeting a St. Eunice side that will be hurting, that will be wounded, that will be bitterly disappointed losing to uh, to one of the other top four sides. But you would expect that, that St. Eunice are that wounded animal and they would come through the game at the Burn Road on Saturday with ease, possibly. You you would expect so that Junins would have too much for them, you know. Um, Ashim, we 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 covered the game out in O'Donnell Park there a couple of weeks ago, and like St. Junins' performance in the first half, I was so impressed with the way they played, with the way they attacked, and they had such width to their team and patience. And they're a very young side; they have a lot of experience, we'll say, up in the defence. But they have a young side; they have young forwards, and. They were really good, but what was really concerning was their capitulation, basically, in the second half when Kilcar turned the screw, Unans didn't have the answers. And that's a concern for Rory Cavan and St. Unans. So it is, from a tournament point of view, we know they're building. We know that they have a very young team and they have a lot of quality players. And, you know, you look at the likes of Jamie Grant, Keelan Gallagher in defence, and you look at Darren McDade, you look at Ryan McFadden around the middle of the park. They're going to have great legs down there and... You know, the burn road at any time is a tough place to go, and particularly in championship football. And they're they're going to make it difficult for Unions, but I don't think they'll have enough to be able to prevent Unions. You know, there's so much quality in this St. Unions team. And, you know, you talk about the three O'Donnells, you know, you talk, you're looking at Niall and Shane up, you know, playing in the forwards and their, their brother Connor. And you just look at the quality that St. Unions have, and you would expect them to have too much for Terman down here. But... You know, Terman will make a battle of it, and Terman won't should, won't have any inhibitions here about playing St. Junins, you know, because they've played them. A lot of these young Terman lads have played them at underage and actually have got the better of them through the underage ranks up through the years. So, you know, it'll be an interesting game, and it'll be expected to be a tough battle. But I would expect Junins to come out with too much for, for Terman in the end and get their first two points on the board. And it's kind of like, you know, it's like a masters weekend or you know the one of the golf majors weekend it's it's moving weekend this weekend and you can find yourself you know on four points or two points or zero points depending on your situation and if you're on zero points after this weekend you know that you could be facing that facing down the releg the relegation battle kind of so it's a massive game for both teams it's important that st june's get two points on the board but equally Terman are going to really put it up to them so they are ashing at 12 noon is the start on Sunday for Glen Swilly against McCool's. An earlier start at that time could change between now and, and Sunday, but it's it's fixed for midday. Uh, Glen Swilly, Michael Murphy informed the last day out in, in their game against uh, Kelly Beggs, and uh, they're at home. And the way McCool's played last week, you would expect maybe Glen Swilly to edge this one, would you, Brendan? You would expect so, yeah, but I think McCool's will make, make them work really hard for it. And you know, Glen Swilly, whilst they didn't have the, the best league campaign, they were without, you know, Michael for a lot of it through injury and his involvement in the county team. And, um, you know, they, they've been, Glen Swilly, have a, they still have some very experienced players with the likes of Michael and Copper and Keelan Kelly and Kevin Marley at 11. And, and they've kind of interspersed that with a lot of good young talent. And, you know, they, they are in a period of transition to a degree. But they they got a great victory down in um, down in Fintra against Killy Beggs the first day, and they'll be buoyed by that, and they'll get you know no, uh, very much like I was referencing uh, Gidor getting on a run. If Glen Swilly can get on a run and build up a bit of confidence with some of these young players they have in the ranks, you know they've been written off too often in the past, and we can we've seen what they can do, what they've done over the last ten years and the achievements that they've made. So. They're going to be really good. They, they'll be primed for this and they'll be ready for it. From a McCool's point of view, you know, they'll be disappointed because we watched them play last year down Mahara Gallum where we, we felt they were very unlucky to lose to a, a Gidor team in the end. And we're probably expecting a bit more from them going into this year. And they don't seem to be optimising the use for getting out of Oshin Gallon up front. Now, I know Marty Riley was missing the last day and he's obviously a key cog on that machine too. But like... You know, they got a great start to the game. They got two early goals. They were in control of the game at the, at the first water break and just kind of let it slip then. So it's going to be a big ask for them to recover from that. And, you know, again, they need to find a way to get Oshin Gallon, to get, get Farah on the ball and to get him causing trouble for defences because we all know the undoubted talent he has. 
But if they're not getting the ball into them, which appear to be the problem the last day, that is an issue for them. And they're going to have to look at that. And they're going to have to look at their senior players like Gary Wilson and Marty Riley, Stephen Riley. These guys are going to have to formulate a plan to try and get this man on the ball and cause him trouble. But they're going to a place, you know, Glenn Swilly, where Glenn Swilly will be well aware of the threat he, pos he possesses. And if they can shut down that threat, they know they'll leave themselves a greater chance of victory. So... That's easier said than done, but I feel that Glenn Swilly would have too much for, for, for McCool's this weekend and to get themselves on four points and to be really threatening to get into the top eight. Our feature game on Sunday will be Aru Ballyshannon against uh, Neve Connell. That will be at Monday's Field, just across the road from uh, uh, Cherney Park in Ballyshannon. Uh, can last year's intermediate champions uh, cause trouble for the side that's been top of the pile the last two seasons, Brendan? Well, listen, it's we, we saw Glenn Finn that Glenn Finn put it up to Nave Connell in the first round. And, you know, whilst the, the, Nave Connell appeared to control the game for long periods, they could never get away from Glenn Finn in that game. And we know how tough a tie Glenn Finn are come championship football. But Nave Connell have such a squad and, you know, they named an experienced team the last day they brought in players that, you know, there, there may be a bit of a hangover from the 2020 final that was on a few weeks ago and they may not be firing on full cylinders yet, but they still did enough to win. And, you know, you, I, I've made it clear that such a strong squad down there and they're going to be really, you know, the, the, there's no, there'll be no fear of complacency with these guys because Martin Regan has them so well prepared and they've dealt with everything that's been thrown at them for the last few years. But you have to give great credit too to Aru. They've come up from the intermediate ranks and they laid down a marker. They put that they a huge 14 point win against four masters uh, last weekend away. And so they've, a, again, a very good young team coming through. They've a good bit of momentum. They've got a lot of good players all over the field. They've, you know, introduced. Some of last year's minors, Kyle, you know, Kyle Murray and Keen Rooney were two lads I was involved with myself last year with the minors, and they've introduced them into the team. And if you know, obviously Nathan Boyle was their scorer and three, chief the last day. They've David Dolan playing up top, and they've they've a lot of really good players. Now it's a big ask for them to be going in against a side, and this will be a real marker of where they're at. And they'll be honest yeah. enough down there. It's yeah. great to see Bally Shannon or to see Aru back at this level of football because you know Donegal County football needs. Aru are playing at this level of football, but this will give them a proper indication of where they really are at. So it will Oshin, and it's a proper test. And as you correctly said, it's in Monday's field due to the ongoing marks that's going on in Father Tierney Park. And you know they'll fancy if they'll fancy themselves. They're 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 kind of there's a spring in their step down there. There's there was always a bit of arrogance, and and I don't mean that in a bad way. Confidence about Aru football kind of thing, and. If they can, they'll be happy. They're dining at the top table again and they'll really put a test up to Nave Connell. But Nave Connell just look to be able to find a way to win, to, to overcome all these challenges that are put in front of them. And they have done so for the last few years. And we can't forget, you know, they'll go for three in a row. So they're going to be so tuned in and so clued into this game that I feel they'll just have too much for a team that is still in transition, still learning. And... Um, that Nave Connell should come out on top on this one uh, with a few points to spare. Yeah. Uh, Glenn Finnegan, St. Knowles, two sides that know each other very well, playing in Division 2 this year. This is the sort of game could end up in a share of the spoils. Could it be a point of peace at the end of the day, Brendan? Yeah, and they've had a lot of good battles to, over the last few years. There, there's a lot of familiarity here between the two teams, so they are, you know, they've been two, the, two really good sides at that level, and you know, Glenn Finn, and I've experienced, you know, this isn't just in the last couple of years, my own time involved with St. Junan's, Glenn Finn, come championship football, they just have this pedigree to be able to raise their game and produce performances that garner results, and they've been so good at that down through the years, and, you know, we see, see Frank McGlynn going really strong for them too, and Ross Marley in the half-back line, it gives them a good foothold, and of course, of Jared Ward up front then, who, you know, he's a, he's a really top player, so he is, and he get a lot of scores for them, and the, the, they really will test St. Nauls, and they have had the upper hand on St. Nauls. From a St. Nauls point of view, you know, they'll be going in cock a hoop too after taking out Terman in the first round, and they know that they can go to four points this weekend, so they can. And, you know, that'll be a massive achievement for them. There's a huge carrot for them. They'll be then looking at a top eight quarterfinal position. So they will. So it's a massive game for both clubs. Um, 
Pather Morgan, like Glenn Finn, will look at Pather Morgan as the key man here in the St. Nall setup from the point of view that they'll know that if they can curb his influence on the game, it's going to have a major impact because he really is the man that takes them. And I know, you know, the likes of Stephen Griffin, you know, Thomas White, I know that uh, young Coughlin got the goal the last day for them. There's plenty of other talent, the Brendan McCall at the back, There's plenty of other talent in the squad too. But Pather Morgan is the guy that may, will make this team take. He's such a good footballer and he's such, he covers, like we see in the ground, he covers a county level and he'll, be, he'll do the similar thing. But if, if, if Glenn Finn can keep the reins on Pather, I would expect Glenn Finn at home and with their championship pedigree and experience to maybe just edge it, Oshin. Okay, one other game, Kilcar hosting four masters. That's the last game of the weekend, and uh, it starts at 4.30. Townie's the venue. Given four masters' performance last week against Arua, you wouldn't expect too much trouble to come from the Tony- Donegal Town boys against last year's beaten finalists, would you? I wouldn't know if, you know, listen, four masters, there's a lot of good work going on at underage level down there. And, you know, that they will come in a couple of years. They're just not ready. And that was evident from their performance and their display. They have a very young side and they're coming up against a Kilcar side that, you know, last year's county finalists uh, put in a barnstorm in second half against St. Eunice. Like it really was Terrific, gosh, in, you know, Matthew McLean kicked points from all over the place in the second half. Patrick's thread up front. And I don't see that they'll have that, you know, they'll have the tools to be, to curb their influence on the game. And, you know, it was all, also interesting the second half against St. Junins that they played Ryan McHugh in a more advanced position. Is that something that they're going to look at throughout the championship this year to give them a bit more impetus up there? But Kikar are in a good place. They'll be, you know, they, they were bouncing coming out of O'Donnell Park that day because their first half performance, they'll know it wasn't good enough. Maybe again, it was a bit of a hangover from the county final and the ongoing issues surrounding that that are well documented. But the, the reaction and the way they control that game in the second half was hugely impressive, Oshin. So it is a big ask for a young four masters team going down to Tony and to try and to look for a result. And it's hard to see how they can come away with anything here. And you would expect a comfortable victory for Kilcar if they're in the right frame of mind going into it. And they are a very well set up team with John McNulty at the helm. And They'll be well prepped for this. A lot of experience there. They won't let complacency sit in. And they should account for this for Masters team pretty comfortably, you would expect, Dashing. The draws for the third and fourth round will be then made after that Kilcar for Masters game. There's also a number of matches in the Intermediate Championship this weekend. Clohanny, they play Burt, Fana Gales to go on Neve Columba, Neve Wara against Neve Olton, Dunlow meet Mallon. Red Hughes against Neve Breed, uh, Convoy against Boncrana, plus Red Hughes are also due to meet Dunlow in the game, which was cancelled last week. That's going to be held on Friday night. But just a note on uh, one of the pace setters, Brendan, in that intermediate championship, Neve Columba won two games, two big matches as well, beating sides that are sort of sitting above them in, in, in the standings in the league, Clohanili, and they had that huge one at home against Boncrana last week as well. Yeah, massive. And they look to be the foreign team of the Intermediate Championship at the minute, so they do. And, you know, they've they've been knocking on the door for the last few years. They've been unfortunate in that they've come across, they've been beaten by the eventual winners over the last number of years, Oshin. And, you know, again, we spoke I spoke about, you know, A Rua Valley Shannon from the point of view that it's good for Donegal football to see them back at senior level. And I remember when I started up, you know, here playing with St. Junins back in 97, Nave Columbo were a big, you know, they were at their peak back then. And we actually beat them in a quarter final back in 97, you know, that great Nave Columbo team. And they've been off the scene for too long. So I think it'd be great to see them back up at senior level. So it would, but they've a long way to go yet. They've some great quality there of that. There's no doubt. And they've had two massive wins. And um, so, yeah, it'll be good to see them back. And then you have, you know, Bunkrana, we know what they have. There's some great talent to the, at their disposal. And Dunload, interestingly, have two games this weekend against Red Hughes. And again, I just want to pass my sympathies to the family of Joe Carlin and his unfortunate passing um, there last week. Um, and for that reason, Dunlow now have two games on both on Friday evening and Sunday. So, Dunlow will be a strong feature in this intermediate. It's a really, really interesting intermediate championship. And I think, you know, you're looking at the likes of obviously Nave Columba, Clahanili, Bunkrana. You know, there are, there, are, there are teams there that'll be looking to make their mark this year and to really push on. And it's, it's a very open championship. 
Claude Neely, you know, I know Jason McGee didn't play last weekend. Can he be available to struggle against Fanet Gales? Um, but they, that's, there's nothing surprising about that from the point of view. There's obviously a, a huge rivalry there and they, they've had really tight games down through the years. So there are some really good games there and this will really get interesting when it boils down to the last eight, the last four to Washington. Yeah, it certainly will. Listen, Brendan, as always, thanks for joining us. Good to talk to you. No problem, Ashin. Thank you.